Hey everyone, so a little while back I was kind of reminded of this archaic Tom Scott video that was published 8 years ago, and it was discussing this really interesting elevator design. The design was called the Paternoster Elevator, and essentially it just composed of two elevator shafts, with one side going up and one side going down, and a bunch of tiny little rooms like in this diagram. After being reassured in the comments by people that it's actually pretty difficult to just get chopped in half guillotine style right here where the elevator goes down, I found it pretty interesting because it's kind of like a cross between an elevator and like an escalator or ferris wheel. Being reminded of that kind of also coincided with the fact that I figured out that you can actually create a somewhat viable block conveyor by simply arranging sticky pistons with slime blocks or honey blocks in this arrangement and powering them consecutively, like so. And with a tad of automation and timing, you can set up something that looks a little bit like this. Now I thought that this was pretty cool. Even though in the same block shaft you can actually retract the block using a similar method and this exact setup as well, I still found it kind of annoying that you'd have to retrieve the block in order to keep going up or keep going down at any given location. It just so happens that all the problems I faced in terms of having to make the elevator go up and down in the same shaft, having to recall the elevator, waiting, floor selection, all these problems are kind of just completely addressed by an elevator design that already exists in real life. Another really nice quirk of being in Minecraft Redstone is that I don't actually have to worry about all of the lawsuits that would accompany a Paternoster elevator that does actually chop you in half, which this one very much will. Eventually I kind of tried to make a safety setup that allowed you to get on and off the elevator while it wasn't moving and only have it move while you're inside, but eventually I scrapped the idea because it got too complicated. I feel like I don't need to say this, but this is not a tactic that you should be using in real life. The first design I kind of tried to go for was putting the two elevator shafts directly next to each other. Because the thing is, is I thought it would look really cool if the central piston was responsible for both the retraction action, sending the blocks downwards on the right side, as well as the extension action, sending the blocks upwards on the left side. This was not a smart idea. However, this setup didn't work for an entirely different reason, because the thing is, is none of the pistons actually stay extended for long enough. This has the interesting result of the block actually being transferred downwards instead of upwards, even though it's in the upward shaft. Being forced by the system to make these pistons extend for a little bit longer than usual means that it's going to be even harder to sync up the logistics between the two elevator shafts, which just makes this idea a total dead end from the start. In this design, we can sort of see the development of the safety mechanism that I was supposed to include, basically just a set of doors that would be constantly available in any given location, connected to this wall setup. And it would cause the entire wall system to update, and allow you to send a signal to the clock that ran the system to say, hey, I'm on the right floor, can you please stop the elevator? I totally threw this design out, although, because later in the final design, things got incredibly crammed and there just became no space. So now we're here, let's talk about the final design. This is what it looks like. You simply hit this button, and it causes it to start up. And then you can simply just get on, get off at any floor, and you can also go down pretty easily. Now, this thing sucks for a lot of reasons, but I'll first go over the good parts about it. First things first, it uses a timing mechanism such that it's only on while you're using it. This timer will keep it on for an I don't know how long of a time, and in that time you can basically make it to anywhere you want to go, and it'll automatically shut off. The next important thing is that I to chose to go for a completely separated elevator shaft design, and I've actually used slime on the left here to indicate downwards, and honey to indicate upwards. Now on to the bad parts, because there are a whole lot of bad parts with this design. To start off, in case you didn't notice, when you're actually getting in, both getting to the lowering section and the uppering section, you get your face absolutely smashed in at essentially every moment. Also, exiting it is really difficult since you move significantly slower while on the elevator platform, making it actually a little bit challenging to get off on the actual floor that you want to get off of. It also suffers from being technically much slower than it actually can be, because if I go ahead and start this, and then freeze the game, 
and find our little glass block, it actually spends an extra tick on each step than it has to. If I take step forward, it's going to stop right here, it's going to wait an entire tick, and then the piston is going to start extending. This is made pretty clear by the fact that pistons take exactly three ticks to extend, indicated by the three iron blocks, whereas the delay timings we're using are using a two redstone tick repeater, which takes four ticks to extend, represented by these stone blocks. That means this little gold block represents every single gap that we could be starting our sticky piston extension one tick earlier. A clear optimal setup would be sticky pistons firing every three game ticks, but obviously this is much more complicated because there isn't just a very very simple one and a half tick repeater. Also, there's definitely much better piston layouts. I know that it's definitely possible to make this three-sided design work. You just have to make sure that you don't end up with that kind of problem. There's also entirely different strategies that completely avoid these ruts, such as this quick mock-up of the Pattern Oster concept using this entirely different piston layout designed by my good friend Green Jab. They have a channel too, go check them out, they make a ton of really awesome videos. I also know the concept of using sticky pistons with slime, contacting blocks on the side to propel stuff up and down, definitely isn't a new concept, as basically 95% the way into this project, I was shown the existence of the J elevator. It's in the description, it's basically just a super fast elevator design concept that does not use the pattern Oster concept, but it's just a standard elevator that moves up and down and carries a singular batch of people at once. So what did we learn? Number one, there's always room for improvement, and number two, if I've made something, there's probably somebody out there who can do it infinitely better, but it was still definitely a whole lot of fun to work through the kinks and absolute horrible mistakes that I made while designing this thing. It's certainly not my greatest work or easiest to use contraption, but it's pretty funky and it looks cool, so that's about all the things that I really care about. Pretty much all the stuff I design is useless garbage like this thing, so if you want to check out the other stuff that I work on, make sure to check out my channel. And if you want to see more, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.